Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Behind the Curtain. I am your host, Pedro DeLuca, and I am sitting here today with former AIW Absolute Women's Champion Haley Hatred. Haley, thank you for joining me here today. And the, Haley, the whole purpose of these Behind the Curtains, we've seen you in the ring, we know what you can do, but this is to try to find out what makes up Haley Hatred. Who is the person behind the wrestler? And so my first question for you, what was it that made you fall in love with wrestling? Um, you know, like everybody else, I just kind of watched it when I was a kid, um, and it was just really appealing to me. Um, I kind of got into it a little bit differently than most people. My dad was a tape trader, and so, um, you know, I got to see a lot of Japanese stuff um, at an early age, and I was really exposed to that versus, like, WWF, and so that really um, influenced, uh, like, my opinion and stuff on wrestling. And I really liked the elaborate characters and stuff like that. A lot of people over there were wearing masks and, you know, all blinked out looking cool. So, um, you know, that was really just appealing to me as a, as a young girl. I was shiny, um, and, then, uh, and then I met like some uh, indie wrestlers when I was a teenager, and kind of realized it could be a profession. It could be something that people do. It's not just like a thing on TV. Uh, so I asked them, you know, how how to get into it, you know, where to go to school and whatnot. And so uh, I signed up for pro wrestling school when I turned 18, and here I am. Okay, as you got into professional wrestling, would you like to go into your, some of your training? Like, who were your trainers? Uh, some of the people that may have helped you along, took you under their wing to guide you along your path? Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I ended up training um, at HWA in Cincinnati, Ohio. And at the time it was a contract school for WWF, um, which is WWE now. <laughs> but um, yeah, at that time they had the cruiserweights there actually, so the, a lot of the WCW guys were down there. Um, the cruiserweights anyway, and the heavyweights were at OBW. Um, but my main trainers, um, it's Les Thatcher School, and then my main trainers were Cody Hawk, Matt Stryker, and Ray Steele. And then um, as I kind of a couple months into my training, after I kind of got the basics down, um, Jimmy Yang actually became a really like uh, influential part of my training. Like we would go, um, we trained about four times a week down there. And Jimmy would come and um, you know train with me on off days and whatnot. And he really like elevated my game and um, helped me think outside the box. Like I think wrestling training, especially when you're new, was very. Uh, very black and white, and he was just like the gray area, like showing me other things that could go down. Now take us into your very first professional match. Oh, <laughs> yeah, my first, my debut was I'm at IWA Mid South. Uh, it was versus Lacey and Rain. It was a three-way match, um, and I was victorious, so that was fantastic. Um, but um, it was, you know, it was. Um, IWA at the time had a lot of um, the big level independent names that um, you know. I think even AOW fans would, you know like and whatnot or would appreciate. Um, you know, Chris Daniels was there, um, CM Punk, Colt Cabana, you know, those kind of guys. Um, so it was, you know, it was, I was nervous performing in front of my peers as well as, you know, uh, the fans, but it was really cool. Like, I got, you know, some great feedback. You know, the match was, was you know, fine. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think anyone could say that my first match was like, amazing, but um, match is what it was. You know, Lacey and Rain at the time were, like, two of the most experienced and well-known names um, on the indie scene, so it was really cool to get a chance in my debut to wrestle against them. Um, and then it's unique, you know, your first watch to be a three-way, <laughs> so, you know, it kind of prepared me for an interesting career. But um, it was really cool just, like, um, after the match getting, like, feedback from, like, you know, Chris Daniels being, like, you know, he, like, actually wrote me out, like, a paper of, like, what was good, what was bad, what I need to work on, and I was just like, that's really cool, like, I'm a rookie and, like, not even a year in the business, and, like, someone of, like, his, you know, his level, as, as famous as he, you know, was at the time and even is now, to sit down and, like, critique me, it was just like, Wow, like wrestling's that very cool, like tight, you know, brotherhood, sisterhood, if you will. So I was really happy. After your first match, you started really spurting out through the indie world. Can you tell us about some of the promotions you were able to work for? Sure. Yeah, my whole um, my whole goal early in, in my career was just to um, kind of wrestle. Make a name through myself throughout the Midwest, um, you know, kind of similar to what Lazy Night had done, and then, um, you know, branch out through the United States. And then um, my eventual goal was to go to um, Canada, Mexico, Europe, and Japan, of course. Um, so early in my career, um, you know, I kind of I just started working in the Midwest and whatnot, um, doing those. You know, I, I worked for um, Ian at IWA Mid South, worked a lot in Michigan, worked a lot in Indiana, Kentucky, whatnot. Um, you know, got some good chances. Um, you know, got I actually wrestled Beth Phoenix in her last match before she went to WWE, so that was that was cool. I was lucky to be in the Midwest at that time. Um, you know, and I got some good chances in, in that area, whatnot. Um, I didn't actually in my early in my career, especially up to like the first four or five years, I didn't really wrestle in Ohio at all, and I am an Ohio native, so I guess that's kind of interesting. But um, you know, and then finally, as my career progressed, I worked out to the East Coast, and um, finally internationally. You spoke of working in your, your home state of Ohio. Uh -huh. Kind of brings you to absolute intense wrestling. Uh -huh. And 
you start off in Absolute Intense Wrestling, Wrestling Men. Uh -huh. Tell us a little bit about your first experiences here at AIW. Yeah, AIW was really interesting. Um, like I said, I didn't wrestle in, um, in Cleveland all maybe once or twice that for JT, you know, um, and um, so AIW, it's like something I didn't really know about and it seemed very um, different than the normal wrestling company, the normal independent company. And um, I just kind of rode up here um, with uh, with Matt Riot and Sammy Callahan. We were both down in Cincinnati and, um, you know, they were saying, you know, we're going to the show, you know, these guys can, you know, squeeze you on if you want to, you know, tag along. And I was like, oh, sure, you know, why not? I mean, tagged along and then, um, you know, I, I met Rebus and the Potato, and <laughs> that's an interesting, you know, couple of guys to meet your first time anywhere. <laughs> so, uh, um, you know, and like you said, I ended up wrestling them for like, what was it? It was like a year? It felt like six, for at least six months. Felt like yeah. eternity. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, you know, um, AIW at the time was like, having women wrestlers, so I wrestled guys naturally. Um, not really something I'm like, you know, strange to doing, but um, wrestling those two was an interesting thing. <laughs> You went from wrestling Dave the Potato and Rebus, Team Sexy as they were, um, to a, a vicious bloody feud with the Passion John Thorne. Can you very quickly tell us about your feud with John Thorne? Quickly, no, but uh, <laughs> short, in, in short, I guess. Um, yeah, John, um, definitely the most bloody, brutal, brutal. Yeah, I don't, I don't have that for Gnarly. <laughs> It was gnarly, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, our first match was uh, no ropes barbed wire match, though. So, I mean, where do you go from there? Um, yeah, that was, it was interesting. I'm not a deathmatch wrestler, really. Um, I think I'd only done, like, a hardcore match before that <laughs> once. There was, like, you know, I got thrown into a post or something. So, um, for that to be my introduction to deathmatches and hardcore wrestling was really, um, Interesting. <laughs> a lot, of, a lot of interesting things here at AIW. Um, but yeah, with John, um, he kind of, you know, kind of blindsided me. He's not really like an active, you know, wrestler on the AIW roster. So for him to be someone I was so involved with and feuding with, um, you know, it was, it was an interesting thing. And then you know, he really, I mean, he got involved like with my championship at the time and stuff, and it was just like inappropriate. So. Moving on from your feud with John Thorne, you basically became the centerpiece of the fledgling AIW Absolute Women's Division. Take us back to that very first Girls' Night Out show where you ultimately captured the AIW Absolute Women's Championship. First Girls' Night Out, wow. Oh, Seems old, so long ago. How old was I? <laughs> <laughs> no, First Girls' Night Out was actually so interesting. Like, um, I think up until that point, and correct me if I'm wrong, maybe myself and Mickey mm -hmm. Knuckles were the only two the competitors ever for AIW. So um, for them to, you know, go you know, full-fledged into an all-women's show is really, you know, it's a cool thing. It's a very bold statement. Um, and I know a women's wrestling was kind of picking up a little bit on the independent level at that point, but, um, you know, Girls Night Out was, it, I always think, and I can say it to this point even, um, AOW always has a really interesting mix of women that they choose for Girls Night Out. You know, you have like a, a little bit of hardcore wrestlers, you have your your new wrestlers, which is really nice to give them a chance to shine, and then, you know, they have like your more well-known wrestlers, you know, so it's, it's a cool mix to, to show everybody, and I know after the Girls Night Out events, even, you know, to go further with that, it seems like a lot of fans always end up liking like the girls that you don't really hear a lot about, you know, so they're really not talking about maybe me or, or like a Sarah Del Rey as much, they're talking about like a new girl, like oh my god, did you see this girl do that? And it's, so it's a really cool chance, I think, for our girls. But the first girls I had out, like an interesting collection of women. Um, I wrestled uh, Alice in Wonderland, uh, first round, second round, Jennifer Blake, which was an awesome, great experience, and then Tammy Lane in the third round to win the championship. And so you know, it was a tiresome night to say the least, wrestling three times, but um, you know, ultimate prize was gold, and girls love gold. Girls love gold. <laughs> You reigned as the Absolute Women's Champion for quite a while mm. and kind of used the Absolute Women's Championship as a springboard to achieve a lifelong goal. Tell us about how you broadened your horizons, not just here in the United States, mm. but well across the world. Yeah, um, you know, um, from here I ended up, I mean, I did t I'd done tours internationally before AIW, but um, I had really got noticed um, after winning the AIW Women's Championship because it's... Um, it was such a prestigious tournament and such a good championship to win. Um, so, you know, Japan, you know, they offered me longer tours and whatnot. Um, and so, you know, that was my ultimate, you know, goal is to go to Japan and um, make a living there and whatnot and have a good career there. And so um, once I got that chance after I won the AW Women's Championship um, to go there and, and stay a little bit longer, I got a lot more chances at championship matches there. It is a little bit different in Japan how, you know, they, um, how they grant championship matches. You kind of have to be somebody who um, has 
experience and has you know notoriety. I mean, you have to be somebody who people are going to pay a ticket to see. They don't just give out championship matches because there's two females in the building. You know, there's a lot of competition. So after I won the AEW Women's Championship. Um, I had more, you know, championship experience, and so I was um, wafted into stronger positions in Japan. And then, um, given that opportunity, I was able to succeed in those positions. And then, you know, even winning as many championships as I did this past year. So, would you like to go into a little bit of those championships? Sure. I was actually um, the first ever male or female triple. Double, triple champion, so that means I had three singles championships and three tag team championships at the same time. And so that's something like, you know, I know a lot of people see like my pictures with all my belts or whatever and they like compare it to like Muda or Ultimate, Drag Ultimate Dragon, excuse me. And um, even they've never done that, so it's pretty cool, I think. But um, yeah, um, I won three um, tag championships with my partner, Keori Yoleyama. And then um, my singles championships, I won, um, I was the first ever foreigner to win the JWP Openweight Championship. And that's like their, um, their main title in that company. And um, the company is going to be 20 years old here in a couple weeks in April so um, to be the first ever foreigner to win that is pretty cool and I think there's only been one or two other foreigners to ever compete for it so I'm just pretty happy to get that chance. Coming back across the pond back to America mm -hmm. once again you are exerting your dominance here in absolute intense wrestling what does the future hold for Haley Hatred here in Absolute Intense Wrestling? Um, I really like I love it it's near and dear to my heart they gave me a lot of chances um, you know kind of like I was talking about with opportunities in Japan, um, you know, to have a good career you just need opportunities and AEW has always given me good opportunities and given me good opponents. Um, so I just kind of want to, you know, stay with that. Um, you know, I don't know when anybody's watching this, but um, tonight I'm wrestling Jenny Rose. I'm really, really excited about that. She's um, uh, also a student in Japan and I think we're really evenly matched. You know, um, we're two of the only foreigners to ever spend time in in the past, I'd say, five years, the really spent an um, elaborate amount of time in Japan and train in Japan. So I think, um, you know, tonight fans will be able to, you know, see that. And if you're watching this after the thing, then I guess buy the DVD. But, <laughs> but um, yeah, um, I just kind of, you know, I want to keep that going. And um, I never did lose the AW Women's Championship, so I'd love to compete for it again um, when the time's right. All right. Well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The future definitely looks bright for Haley Hatred, not just here in Absolute Intense Wrestling, but all over the world and all of independent professional wrestling. So thank you, Haley Hatred, for joining me here today on Behind the Curtain. Thanks, and best sir. of luck to you here in AIW. Thank you.